Thank you, Jakob. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today uh, at the opening of this exciting week. And of course, a big thank to all of the organizing parties for organizing yet another important event. Also, I want to thank all of you out there who are tuning in today, whether you are here in Copenhagen, beautiful, sunny today, or attending the event online. And why is that? Well, because I'm certain that all of you, whether you are an entrepreneur or engineer, whether your skill is coding or cooking, whether you're part of a month old startup or a century old company, all of you are here today because you want to make an impact, to come up with new solutions to old problems and ultimately make the world a better place. And as you know, there is much to be done. We all share the same planet, but by 2050, we will be consuming as if we had three planets and we will be generating 70% more waste per year than we do today. As consumption rises, our nature is disappearing. We face plastic in our oceans and pollution in the air. Our climate is becoming unstable and communities all around the globe are already feeling the effects. This cannot go on. If we keep stretching the limits of our planet, eventually we will come up short. Therefore, we need to ease the pressure on our climate and biodiversity. We need to speed up the transition to a more sustainable and fair world, and we need to do it fast. We already have the necessary goals to show us the way, the Paris Agreement, the SDGs, and across the world, green policies are put in place to turn ambitions into actions, to ensure a green recovery in, in the wake of the current pandemic. Like the European Green Deal with its clear focus on circular economy, minimizing waste and pollution and much more. But policies can stand alone. We need your ideas and your creativity to come up with the solutions required. We depend on your designs to go with our decisions and on your sustainable products to go with our plans. This means we have to work together, public and private, hand in hand, across business sectors and cities. In Denmark, as well as in the EU, we have a strong tradition for cooperation between the public and the private sector. We believe in setting ambitious goals, but we also believe that the best way of doing so is by involving the relevant businesses and industries because you're the ones who know the challenges and potentials that lie ahead. And because we repeatedly have seen how this approach leads to the best results for the environment, for consumers and for businesses. As a result, here in Denmark, many sectors do not regard regulation as a stick intended to control business, but rather as a lever to ensure progress, innovation and competitiveness. Here, regulation can be a way to ensure a level playing field where fair play toward our common environment is encouraged rather than setting you back. Less than a year ago, the Danish government, together with a broad majority in the Danish parliament, set a highly ambitious goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We want to reduce emissions with 70% by 2030 compared to the year of 1990. And we want to get there in a way that also supports our exports, jobs, welfare and prosperity without increasing inequality. So the task is big and so ambitious that the government can't do it alone. All sectors have to contribute, energy, transport, industry, water and waste, to name a few. And it is imperative that the business community is involved. So we ensure that new innovative technologies and solutions are developed and market. Therefore, we started the process by creating climate partnerships. Partnerships where leading Danish companies and organizations gave us their recommendations on how we can reduce emissions in each sector. 
The partnerships clearly show that our businesses are eager to contribute to a greener and more sustainable society. And they help inform and guide the first steps toward reaching our climate goals. One example is our water sector, a sector that due to decades of regulation and innovation is already one of the most efficient and sustainable in the world. Many of our wastewater plants have become so effective at turning sewage into biogas that they now produce more energy than they consume. And the green developments in the sector is the reason why we, each summer here in the harbor in Copenhagen, can see teenagers swimming, families fishing, and kayaks in the now clean water. But we believe that we can do even better. Therefore, together with the sector, we set the goal of becoming the first country with a water sector that is both climate and energy neutral a goal we want to accomplish no later than 2030. This will not only contribute to reaching our climate goals, we believe it will also spur innovation and encourage Danish water companies to invent new and more efficient technologies that can both bolster exports and inspire more countries to modernize their water sector. Another sector that is undergoing changes right now is our waste sector. Here we have made a new national plan for waste prevention and management with the vision of reducing the amount of waste and have a climate neutral waste sector in 2030. Therefore, we are now streamlining the way we sort our waste on a national scale. This will not only make sorting and recycling easier for our citizens, it will also improve the quality of the waste streams, making it more attractive for companies to invest in new recycling technologies. Likewise, we are strengthening our focus on circularity in the construction sector. Here, we already have a number of firms engaged in making construction a more circular endeavor. Some have developed methods for reusing bricks or recycling insulation. Others are experts at designing buildings that can be disassembled and reused instead of demolished. And some have specialized in producing concrete in a way that uses fewer virgin materials. But with a sector that accounts for approximately 40% of all waste produced, we need to rethink how we use our resources. Therefore, in just two years, we will have standards for the climate footprint of new construction. Also, there will be requirements to follow standardized plans when demolishing a building. So that when a building is taken down, we make sure that the materials are sorted and processed in the best possible way, minimizing waste. The demand for new and green solutions is growing, not just in Denmark or across a handful of sectors, but globally and across all industries. It is driven by consumers that want safer and more environmentally sound products. It is driven by companies that strive for greener and more transparent supply chains or who seek to avoid sudden price hikes on materials and resources, like the ones we are seeing right now where prices on commodities like copper have reached all-time highs. And it is driven by regulations and policies, like the recently adopted EU action plan towards zero pollution with ambitions to significantly reduce waste generation, plastic litter at sea, microplastics, air pollution, and more. Or the Danish government's proposal from last week, where we aim to ensure cleaner air in our large cities like Copenhagen. And last but not least, it is driven by citizens that demand we take better care of our planet. I don't believe any of these factors will slow down. So to all of you out there who are striving to make an impact or considering making a green transition, I have one message. Keep going. No matter if you are working on your first prototype or refining a product line that have been around for decades, no matter if your business is in the cloud or in your garage, no matter if you are involved in a startup, an SME or a 700 person company, 
The need for a green and sustainable future is here, and it is only getting bigger. And we need you and your solutions if we are to steer the world into a greener and more sustainable path to the benefit of our, of our climate, biodiversity and businesses. Thank you very much.